From their point of view, it would make sense if they could get by with it. They could win a good deal of the world this way. But they will not be able to get away with it. We intend to block this avenue of conquest as we are blocking all others by training the forces of free governments who ask for such help to defeat the subversives who wage this kind of war. And this brings us to the situation of the moment. For as we send men over to the small, proud ally who has asked for our assistance, this is precisely the kind of help we will provide. To the best of our ability, sir. Thank you, Captain. We are glad to have you here. Very glad indeed. Thus, the mission begins. As the Americans come to the beleaguered country to train its forces to fight the communist insurgents. The training is strenuous and thorough. It's the kind which will pay off. For before you can defeat the guerrilla, you have to find him. And in order to find him, you have to be able to travel the way he travels. The guerrilla must always be kept off balance and on the run. He must be denied the opportunity to attack. And finally, he must be ferreted out and killed. Along with the military training begins the long, patient, painstaking effort of gaining the allegiance of the people, of convincing them through a program of civic action that their interests can best be served by the legally constituted authority of their country. Interest in the hard problems of their lives will reach their hearts. Not just professions of sympathy, the communists can and do give those, but actual and honest demonstrations are what pay off. With popular support swinging now behind the government, the insurgent is cut off from the support and the source of supply that he must have. With the guerrillas becoming isolated, and with the regular forces becoming steadily more accomplished in the techniques of hidden warfare, the serious work of guerrilla hunting begins. This is slow war and hard war. But the long months of training, of patience and determination have their effect. Slowly, the heavy tide which threatened to engulf this land in the murk of communist enslavement begins to roll back. The turning tide rustles along the jungle floor as soldiers now well coached in the techniques of counter guerrilla warfare take the offensive, flushing out and destroying insurgent groups. The changing tide rolls out of the skies above the brush. The turning tide reaches far. It carries to the very headquarters of the leaders of the revolution with the word that the federal forces are closing in. The bold men who ravaged the land with such reckless spirit now turn and run. But the cause they served before is the same one they serve now in crisis. If that cause can best be advanced by escaping, carrying with them the seeds and the techniques of the revolution, then escape is the highest good. All else is expendable.
these men move in the conspiracy of those animated by a sinister dream. Mankind locked in the dead spirit of a Soviet world. In the sweep of this tortured vision, defeats are temporary. Ahead lies another day, another opportunity for subversion, another poor and struggling nation to be raped by the sword of revolution. This is the unceasing challenge they pose. History's answer to this challenge lies now with a warrior who trains for stealth and cold violence, who trains to fight the lonely and brutal war of the guerrilla, who prepares to meet the enemy and defeat him in warfare's most distant regions, in the remote silences of the sea, in the changeless jungle brush, and in the changing minds of men. This is the unconventional warrior who trains to give his nation and the world of free men the weapon with which to meet and defeat communism's third challenge in our day. To crush the hope for victory from the ambitions of men who grind their heels on mankind's face in lands bleeding now and yet to bleed in the torment of red insurgency. To banish their dark dream to the shadows of history as it is written by free men.